Why are orcs better musicians than elves? Because their orchestras are the best. What's going on, YouTubes? Today we're going to be talking about Transmute Crystals, a resource that the majority of ESO players probably wish that they had more of because it allows you to do exceptionally awesome things. It take it take bad traits on an item and make it into a good trait, or you can re use it to reconstruct whole sets that you have previously bound into your sticker book for a cost that is actually reduced each time you add something to your collection system. They're overall one of the best resources in the game, and it was absolutely game-changing when it came out because it gave people the ability to farm sets without having to actually suffer the consequences of getting a bad trait. Now, there's a way to get the actual trait that you want, regardless if you want to reconstruct it from scratch and then pay to upgrade it uh, with your upgrade materials, or if you just want to use the system to change a trait uh, using the transitional, you know, transmute crystals in this way and go from one trait to another. Overall, it's a great addition to the game, but it begged an awesome question. What are the best ways to farm transmute crystals? And I've actually talked about this twice before, but on differing methods. So the first video I talked about the Cyrodiil rewards. Every 30 days, you're able to get 50 transmute characters per character. But a lot of you guys were like, well, that's, I got to wait. I have to do, you know, I got I to wait a whole 30 day period. I only get 50 for that. Is it worth it? In my opinion, it is still worth it. It's still worth doing that method. Uh, because it's very fast, and yes, you do have to wait for the rewards to come, but getting 50 for usually 45 minutes of work is pretty efficient. But what are some other ways that you can get Transmute Crystals utilizing and cheesing certain mechanics that are inside the Elder Scrolls Online? And many of you may know that the easiest method, if you're looking to farm, uh, is actually Random Normal Dungeons. But Random Normal Dungeons is not quite the most simplistic way to farm transmutes, in my opinion, which is why I've always looked towards Cyrodiil rewards. You know exactly what you need to do, get to rewards tier one, you wait for the campaign to end, and then boom, in the mail for you, 50 transmute care, with transmutes per character. If you've got 10, that's 500 transmutes. But some people will farm random normal dungeons, and I had just never been about it until I had learned people were cheesing this to be significantly easier. And you might think, well, one, why is farming normal dungeons hard? And two, how did they cheese it? Well, the first part is actually relatively easy. People were cheesing it because you do not have access to every single dungeon depending on the level that you are. So for example, if I queue in, I could get a really long normal dungeon, Runes of Mazatune. It's going to take me a, a, a healthy amount of time to complete. I get Skill Caller's Peak. I could get Scrivener's Hall. But you know who can't get that? A low-level character. And that's why having a low-level character can actually aid you in getting into easier dungeons. In fact, the only dungeons that you're going to be able to get is Spindle Clutch 1, Banish Cells 1, and Fungal Grotto 1. Which, if you remember my Undaunted Farming video, means you can complete those dungeons in around 2 to 3 minutes if you're farming them with 4 people. But what are some ways that if you've got this level 10 character... What are the ways that you actually do this method, and should you just generally utilize this in other ways? So there's ways you can do this with friends and kind of on your own. Doing it on your own is relatively simple. Just hop on a level 10 character, and then all you have to do is queue for your random daily dungeon, and then complete it. And then if you want to continue to do it on other characters, you can continue to do that. I've got example for level 15. If you've got a bunch of low-level characters, you can continue to farm it on there. It's not going to be as efficient, but it is something you could do to get a healthy chunk of transmit crystals every day, get a little bit of experience as well to go along with it, and really only you're going to have to do is the easiest dungeons in ESO, and the people that are there are easily going to be able to complete it with you. Even if you were by yourself, you could probably almost complete it because of what's called the baby buff. But that's not how people have been cheesing this. And the way that people were cheesing this is they would get into groups of four with three main characters and then one level 10. So let's say our boy Redonius Redface, uh, he would be the, the guinea pig here. He'd be, you know, the odd man out, right? And this would be a group farm that we would do with four players in total, right? So what we would do 
is we would all get up and we would all queue for our random normal dungeon. It's the only option that I even have. Then what they would do is, is they would vote to kick me. I would start by logging out. They'd vote to kick me. Why do they vote to kick you? Well, if you get kicked out of a dungeon, you don't have a cooldown versus if you leave the dungeon, then you have that cooldown. Now, there's another way that you could do this too, where you just remain on this character and you farm it, but you're not going to be farming it as efficiently. Although what they do then is you just jump on your other character and they invite you and you complete the dungeon that way on your other character. Uh, you could definitely stay on this character. And essentially what you guys continue to do is, is they can swap through their characters because as you go through this, your premium Undaunted Explorer supplies is highest on characters that have not yet done their normal daily dungeons. If you have multiple characters, multiple, you know, friends, you know, three other friends, and that at least have, you know, a level 10 character and a bunch of CP leveled characters, you could just farm a bunch of Spindle Clutch, Fungal Grotto, and so on, Dark Shade Caverns, you know, on all of your guys' characters, utilizing the spawn pool of your level 10. The person on the level 10 is not going to get any of these rewards, so you have to cycle through. Because if he's leaving, he's not going to get the transmute crystals at the end. And if he continues to farm the dungeon by not leaving, it's going to get significantly reduced. So whether or not you keep the level 10 and you go through the entirety of the dungeon is kind of up to you, based on if you want to kind of keep him and actually do the dungeon or not. Uh, that'll depend on your guys' preference and if you guys feel like it's worth doing it that way. Beautiful people over on the Reddits, the YouTubes, and the Facebooks have said that this is the method that can get you between 100 and 200 transmutes, but it is going to require you to utilize your friends. Now, you can still farm, as I said earlier, on low-level characters, and I would encourage you guys to do so because there's really no drawback. You can only be put into the easiest dungeons in the game, and you're going to get a healthy chunk of transmutes each time you do it. So there's really no downside, and you get other things that you can sell and, you know, blah, 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 a bunch of ornate junk and things like that. So there's really no downside to doing this method, except that, in my opinion, I do find more fun in farming Cyrodiil. I definitely think that getting yourself your campaign rewards is definitely also uh, worth doing. There's only 20 days left on the campaign, but again, you're not going to get those rewards until the campaign ends, and it requires you to get to rewards tier 1. So please make sure you set it as your home campaign. Don't be like I do with some of my characters. I log into them. I farm to rewards tier 1. And then I realized that I have not made it my home campaign, and I have not, in fact, farmed to rewards tier one. How do you get to rewards tier one? It is only a conglomeration of your total amount of AP you've gained. So if you sit and fix walls and fix doors, you are working towards you know rewards tier one. You don't have to make it overly complicated. You don't have to build ten bomb builds and go out and bomb people while they're on things. It's actually exceptionally simple. It's my usual go-to recommendation because I just think it's more fun content. But if you would like to utilize the mechanics of the Dungeon Finder system and you've got friends or you want to do it solo, or if you're just low level and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I really want to do dungeons, but I don't want to be a burden, don't worry. You're the opposite of a burden. Everyone wants to queue with you because the more low levels that are queuing, the more people are going to be put into Spindle Clutch 1, Dark Shade Caverns 1, and Fungal Grotto 1, and they'll be the happiest they can be. It's the people who get pulled into terribly long dungeons that are going to be very sad, so... You help everyone out by doing this regardless if you do this in a group or regardless if you do this solo. But dear friends, that's going to wrap up the video. We are still doing our three giveaway drawings. All you have to do to enter is leave a like on the video. Stay subscribed. 40% of you lovely jevlies are subscribed, which is like twice the YouTube average. So thank you. The third one, a random word be flashed upon the screen throughout the entirety of the month. If you're the first person to comment that word, and I promise I try to make it painfully obvious when it is inside a video. Uh, there's usually an audio cue to go with it. You comment that word first, you win. So thank you guys so much again for watching, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you. Thank you guys so much for sticking around past the end if you're interested in checking out yesterday's video it's an update to the crown store situation so if you want to see what's going on with crown store and how it's coming back today and it's going to be slowly unlocked for everybody check out yesterday's video and i'll catch you guys later peace